This video is about prophase, which is one of the steps of mitosis that you need to know to understand this chapter. Uh, we're going to use this diagram as a way of talking about things for most of the chapter. Uh, it's very difficult to find a perfect diagram of the process of mitosis. I like a lot of things about this one, although there are a few things that I'll point out on here that we'll look at a little bit differently. But to start off, uh, we're looking at prophase over on the right hand side. And in this video, we'll talk about some changes that are going on between interphase and prophase that are important. Uh, to be honest, prophase is one of the more complicated aspects of mitosis. Many of the other phases only have one or two things that are happening. During prophase, there's many things that are going on. Uh, the first thing that happens in prophase is that the DNA is visible for the first time. Usually during interphase, the DNA can't be seen. It's inside the nucleus, but since it's not condensed down into chromosomes like it is during prophase, you can't see it. So one of the first things to talk about is the idea that chromosomes form and the DNA is now visible. Another thing that begins to happen, if you're looking at these little black dots, those are the centrioles. The centrioles produce these things called spindle fibers, so these little web-like structures that are eventually going to move the chromosomes around the cell. So the centrioles begin to create the uh, spindles during prophase. The other thing about this picture that I don't really like is um, the nucleus begins to break apart during this phase. So usually like in your textbook and in some other diagrams, the nucleus is kind of shown as like a dashed line showing that it's starting to come apart. So I'd think of it that way instead of the solid line that the book or that the uh, that this diagram uses to represent it. So those are the uh, the three basic things that you should know during prophase. The chromosomes condense down, the spindles begin to move and are, are produced by the centriole, and then the nuclear membrane begins to break down around the outside. I'll give you a list of those simple things to know about prophase. Uh, like I said, first thing for this one has to do with those chromosomes. So the chromosomes form. As a consequence of that, you can see the DNA in this stage. Another thing that happens is the nucleus begins to come apart. The chromosomes have to move around the cell during the process of mitosis, and if they're trapped inside the nucleus, that can't happen. So that one's kind of logical. And then the last one is the centrioles. They begin to produce the spindles. The other thing that happens to them is they begin to move to opposite poles of the cell. Poles just mean either end of the cell. Uh, if we bring that picture back, you can get a better idea for what we're talking about with this one. All right, so now that we've got our picture, um, the idea with the poles is that originally the um, centrioles start sort of in a cluster at one end of the cell and eventually they end up one at the top and one at the bottom. So that's them moving to the poles of the cell. The spindles are kind of what push them and allows the, uh, the centrioles to get there. So I hope this goes through and makes the steps of prophase a little bit easier. Whenever we do one of these videos, uh, these are like the main notes that you should have. It's not all the important things, but I try to put all the main sort of ideas for you on the last page so you have that in some kind of organized fashion. Um, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in class.